This is a PV cell, and one of the things I want to show you here is how absolutely thin it is. It is paper, paper thin, and in that little thin space, remember, there's three layers. There's the positive layer, the negative layer, and the junction in between them. So the manufacturing on this is very precise stuff. You'll also notice when you look at it, it's got the conductors across the front of it, and that's where those little electrons get up onto the, uh, the circuit and make their path. And then you'll also notice these lines here are the bus bars, which connect it to the, solar, the other solar cells inside the solar panel. And one of the other things that I want to show you with this cell is how fragile they are. These break like potato chips. And you can see it's just, just holding it. Sometimes just looking at it funny will break it. So that's one thing to always keep in mind when you're working with solar panels, how fragile these are inside the frame and under the glass and how easy it would be to break them. This is a 240 watt solar panel made by Centro Solar. And one of the things to note is remember, these are the same solar cells as the ones I just showed you. And remember how fragile those were. Now, if I push in certain places on the panel, there is still a little bit of flex in there. So it's something you always have to be taking into consideration when you have panels and you're working with them, that it does have this nice high strength aluminum frame, which this one is anodized black, just so it looks a little nicer. And it does have very strong glass over it. This glass is about as strong as a car windshield, which one of the things customers always ask is how strong is the glass and what can it handle? And they always worried about hail or if they live on a golf course, they're worried about golf balls hitting it. And I always go back to the car windshield analogy. If you're going to have hail bad enough, big enough, that's going to bust out all your car windows, your solar panels are probably going to get beat up too. But little tiny hail, little quarter inch hail, you know, small amounts of that kind of stuff isn't going to hurt the panel at all. It is pretty tough stuff. Now under that glass we have our solar cells and this panel has 60 solar cells in it and they're all wired together in series and each solar cell is about half a volt so when they wire them together in series that means you get about 30 volts out of the panel. And then you'll notice we've got the bus bars here and the cell I showed you only had two bus bars on it and you'll note that this panel actually has three bus bars over each solar cell. And that's an engineering thing that actually solar panel companies will even advertise and make a big deal out of how many bus bars they have. But the bottom line is this is a 240 watt panel. It doesn't really matter how many bus bars it has, it's 240 watts. But the important thing is that you have a good frame around it and you have this glass. Now this glass, again, it's like a car windshield and it is like safety glass. If you do get a dink in it, it will spider across the whole panel over time with heat and cold just like a car windshield does. And we'll show you a broken panel in a minute so you can see what that glass is like. This is the back side of the solar panel and there's a few things I want to talk about here. First of all, this area here, this is a polymer back sheet that they use and it's one of the more delicate parts of the solar panel. And it's something we always have to watch out for when we're installing because what can happen is if you start to set this down and you're not paying attention, you could have a mid clamp or something sticking up from your racking that can tear this back sheet. So, and once this is torn, the panel is no good anymore. You have to get rid of it because water can get in it. If it still works, water can get in it and it won't work anymore. So the back sheet is something to always be careful about. Now the frame itself, this one, they're always aluminum. This one's anodized black. And you'll notice there's some holes in it. First there's holes up here in the corner and that's just for water drainage, just so you don't end up with water puddling in the corner of the panel and, and having a corrosion problem. The next thing you'll notice here are the mounting holes. There's one here and there's one here. And these are put in by the manufacturer, and we don't use them very often. It's very difficult when we're doing a roof mount to get your hands under here and actually use these holes to bolt the solar panels down. Typically what we're doing is we're putting a clamp on that clamps it to the railing instead. But these holes are still important, and it's mostly because of their location. This first one is one eighth of the panel length, and this one is one quarter of the panel length. And that's important because that's where the manufacturer wants this panel supported. So when we put our rails on the roof, we're going to measure everything out and lay it out so that we have a rail supporting the panel between these two points. So we want less than one eighth of the panel hanging over the rail. I'm sorry, more than one eighth of the panel hanging over the rail and less than one quarter of the panel hanging over the rail. Now, the other thing on the frame itself is we have the holes for grounding. Now we've mentioned that all the metal parts in a solar power system have to be grounded and the panel frame is one of those parts that needs to be grounded and they give you a mounting uh, place to mount that ground lug right there and there's one on either side of the panel 
And this panel even has one on the, the short side too, which a lot of solar companies don't put that there. But those are the only holes you can use to put a ground lug for your solar panel to ground it. Now, if you're using the weave system, you don't actually have to use those holes. You're going to use the weaves to bond your solar panel frame to the racking, and that will be your grounding for it. But just depending on how you're going to do the grounding, the holes are still there for you because we still have to use ground lugs in a lot of jurisdictions. Now, the other thing to notice about this is we have our junction box back here with connectors coming off of it. Now, this junction box originally was called a junction box because you actually unscrewed this and opened it up and made your connections in here. You didn't have these wires coming off of it to help you. And these connections were actually, you had a screw for positive and a screw for negative. And you would actually take your wire, wrap it around that screw, and screw it down tight. And when you stop to think about it, with electricity, if you have a loose connection, if you don't tighten that screw well enough, or if the wire kind of pops off a little bit when you tighten it, you don't get a really good tight connection, it will generate heat. And it can be a very dangerous situation. It could cause a fire. So one of the things they noticed when they were doing solar on a lot of homes and businesses is they realized that was kind of a dangerous situation. So they changed the requirements for the solar panels. And now for a solar panel to be UL listed, the junction box has to be closed. The other problem we had when we were putting our wires inside the junction box is you actually had conduit knockouts on the side that you would knock out, and then you would have to waterproof that. You'd put your wires through and put on strain relief and waterproof it. And that was another point of failure, a place where something could go wrong if it wasn't waterproofed properly, it would short out the panel when it rained. So the junction boxes are now closed. And the original connectors that they put on the solar panels were just little rubberized connectors. These are the new kind. But the old rubberized connectors worked fine and they were waterproof, but the problem with them was when you connected them, you could just pull them apart. There was no tool needed and no special knowledge needed to unconnect them. And the problem with that is when you take these apart, when the system is under load, so you've got your grid tie system on the roof of the house, it's running, the inverter's on, it's pushing power into the grid. When you're doing that and you go and unplug your solar power, solar panel from the system, you will actually create a 500 volt arc, which is a very dangerous thing. It's about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It will burn all the oxygen in the air around you, so basically you'll have a big poof of flame. It will melt the connectors, it will burn your sleeve, it will burn your hands, it will probably scare the heck out of you and knock you off the roof. And if you look at it, it'll burn your retinas and you'll be blinded. So the arc is a bad thing. So what they decided to do instead is to do these locking connectors. And these actually have to have a way to lock. First of all, they say do not disconnect under load on them, which is important. And then they lock. So when I go and put these together, you hear that click, and I can't pull them apart. That is the locking connection. And by the way, I have just shorted out this solar panel. I have put positive to negative directly with no, nothing in between, which would be a short circuit. And that doesn't hurt the solar panel at all, so I could leave it short circuited all day if I wanted. But just so you know, that's a short circuit. And then to take these apart, you have to pinch just in the right spot. And if I pinch right there and wiggle them apart, they come apart. So that's a little more difficult than just being able to pull them apart and you actually have to know where to grip them. And technically you should have to have a tool, which they have other ones that are even harder to get apart that's really hard to do without the special tool. So that keeps us safe and keeps people who don't know what they're doing from disconnecting the solar power systems when they're under load and creating that arc that can be a really dangerous condition. The other thing you'll notice on this panel is on the very back here, we have a label. And we've talked about the label, and it has to have certain specifications of the solar panel on it, and that's all determined by the UL listing on the panel. And they're very handy in the end, because when you're putting the solar panel on, you know what it is. But when someone comes in two years later to work on the system, to add to it or do something to it, they don't know what solar panel it is, except that they can find the label on the back of it. And so when someone comes in later to do more work on the system or add to it, that label comes in very handy. So that's all the things you need to know about the back of the solar panel. Now this is a broken solar panel, and we keep it on our wall here in the training room to show people what the glass is like. Now I've said it's like a car windshield and it's pretty good strong glass, but this particular panel got damaged in shipping and it looks like it got hit by a forklift right here. And you can see the glass, just like a car windshield, it's spidered out from that point. And you can actually kind of take little chunks off it here, and they're big, thick, they're not really sharp, but they're big, thick chunks of glass, just like you would get when a car windshield breaks. Now, 
The thing to note about this is that this solar panel still works. It still outputs power. But we can't use it in an installation because, number one, it's ugly. And number two, as soon as water gets in it, it won't work anymore. So it's one of those things where the panel is basically ruined. And the question we always get is, can I replace the glass in the solar panel? And there really is no good way to do that. First of all, the frames are not built to be taken apart and put back together. And so there's really no way to get the glass out and get the new glass in and have it go back together. And then even if you could, you would have to find the right kind of glass. Because if you take a solar panel and try and use it through a window, it doesn't work very well because the window glass actually blocks the frequencies of light that the solar panel uses. And I tell you what, that was a fun tech support call when I learned that, when someone finally told me that they had it inside a window instead of outside. And I made them go outside with it and suddenly it worked. Um, but that's the, uh, because this, this glass is not just regular glass. Now, the other thing to note about this is that if you get a little tiny crack in a solar panel, you should do something about it right away. You don't want to leave it because as it gets hot and cold and expands and contracts, that will spider across the whole solar panel and eventually water will get in it. So if you have a damaged solar panel in a system, the best thing to do is replace it completely. But if you can't do that for whatever reason, a little bit of windshield repair goes a long way. You put a little dollop of windshield repair in the crack just like you would on your windshield and that will keep the crack from expanding and destroying the entire solar panel.